taking a look under the bonnet of Cameron's car for his water injection system. Uh, as you can see here, we've got this hose coming in here, runs off to this solenoid, and once the solenoid's activated, the water running through this solenoid here goes into this jet, which has been buried into the intake here uh, with some epoxy, seals it with epoxy. Here is a quick shot of the injector. As you can see, it's got a very fine tip on the end of that hook there. The water actually comes out of this main body here, hits that and then just disperses away from the, uh, from the unit itself. Uh, so the solenoid is switched internally. Uh, we'll show you that in a second. Actually, I'll show you that now. So we've got a little on and off switch here. So we just tap that when we want the water injection to do its thing. And that'll open up the solenoid, allowing the water into the intake. So here's a quick shot of the water reservoir in the back seat here. And here is the pump that we're using to pump the water into the engine bay. Uh, now this is all activated off the same push button that's attached to the gear stick here. So once Cameron pushes that red button, both this pump here and the solenoid in the engine bay that we've already looked at uh, turn on. The water gets pumped through that hose there and comes out on the engine bay side. What we have here is a MSD street fire in their basic first sort of series that they do. It's just a little CDI unit that uh, multi sparks. So for pretty much 20 degrees of crankshaft rotation, it will fire anywhere up to six times per cylinder. Um, and it also puts out instead of 12 volts to your coil, you're receiving 435 volts to the ignition coil. Uh, so the ignition doesn't break down at all and gives at least, at least roughly double the spark output from a standard system of around 20,000 volts. It'll step that up to around 40,000 to 43,000 volts. All right, also fitted is an MSD blaster coil, uh, just the SS blaster coil. And yes, that's pretty much what gives us the, um, yeah, the, the high output voltage that we need to you know, make sure it doesn't run out of any spark and pull all the way cleanly to 6,500 and, and 7,000 revs. And also we have the original coil. This original coil I found between the primary and the secondary of the coil had 19,000 ohms of resistance from factory. Uh, tested the blaster coil and it comes in at anywhere between 800 to 1,000 ohms depending on the temperature of the day. Um, and yes, the red and black wires on these you shouldn't really touch once you, they're installed because it's about 435 volts at that terminal when the engine's running. Okay, basically, yeah, and now from the output here and the line here, we've got this going down to the dizzy cap. Um, I've had to actually screw it all the way into the side because originally this coil sat up underneath here and this went all the way out through the dizzy cap. I've actually had to screw that with some resin as well. So it's got a, a solid screw going through into the actual aluminium piece that goes across into the center of the distributor, which distributes the spark. But I've also had to put on some uh, white, well, was white resin in there. It's gone a little bit you know, orangey from the heat from the engine base. And um, yeah, that's what gets my spark down through the leads into the plugs. Right, we're in the car with Cameron, and there's his button. He hasn't got his finger on the button yet, <laughs> but we'll get there in a second. Uh, we're going to take a drive. You can hear the um, little gizmo going down there, and we're off and running. What speed do you have to get up to? to oh, any speed? Any speed. It's just, rev, it's just pretty much rev dependent is the only thing about it. Just a little bit of revs and then starting on oh, now. Oh yeah, felt that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kicks ass. Yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. We'll get in the open a little bit. Just tell us what you've got. You don't have to tell me because I can feel it. <laughs> just, just say when you're pressing the button. Pretty much. people at home. Mm -hmm. But I can definitely feel it when you press the button. I'm just, I'm just watching the finger on the button here. Yeah, right. There's low throttle and then just going back to about a third throttle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
got some go, and that is not even steam. That's just mm. cold, straight cold water in jet format, so that it, it is atomized. And the original AC on this car pulls all the timing out. So basically, I'm not using any more than about a third throttle on all the pulls. Yep. Because if I use any more than that, it pulls all the timing back to around 12 degrees, and the engine just makes noise at that point and doesn't go anywhere. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's getting going to be fixed up soon with a Haltech E8 ECU, which I'll be able to tune and then add some more timing into it, and you know, keep the timing up around 20 degrees when we're under full like full throttle, and um, yeah, be able to pull some fuel out as well and make it more fuel economy, and still make the same power, and if not a little bit more. <laughs> And yeah, all this on a little 1.5 with a standard camshaft and it is very small. I've rebuilt the engine twice just playing around with it. And I can tell you that the uh, engine yeah, profile cam specs, that the amount of air the actual engine is drawing in is not much at all. So it's yeah. actually done a very, very large increase in power from what it once was. Yeah, a definitely got his finger <laughs> on the button already. feeling engine to being a lot smoother. Yeah. 